which may be affects uh, by um, reducing the CD4 cell count and get opportunistic infections of the eyes mostly but there can be HIV retinopathy yeah. that doesn't cause loss of vision yeah. this can have anterior segment lesion right. that is less common but most common is the posterior was was a posterior segment lesion cytomegalovirus retinitis but now with the age of uh, with the advent of all new a ART drugs that posterior segment lesions has markedly reduced but we see the tuberculosis lesion of the eye the small choroidal nodules in the eye we also see immune recovery uveitis immune recovery changes in the eye and also the new drugs producing some kind of side effects which we still do not know some of them produce dry eye that uh, irritations of the eyes and the, um, some kind of a um, uh, color vision defect, defect or a small subtle <coughs> defect in the retina so we are doing a study on that um, uh, some of the kind of OCT and optical coherence tomography of the retina, small retinal changes which can occur inside the eye. ERG also we are doing in that one. We go to the YRG care center and see all age patients, particularly who are admitted. Yes. And any patients with ocular complaints which we, are, mm -hmm. we see. Ocular complaints means eye complaints. Eye complaints. Yes. So the like you know dimness of vision dryness and all these things. We also see some children of mother to uh, child transmission which has occurred. These children has grown up and if they are not receiving ART, they develop some eye complications. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 4.8% yeah. Four Four of HIV patients had ocular tuberculosis. They can have nodules in the eye, choroidal nodules in the back part of the eye they can develop subretinal abscess in the eye. Uh, they can also develop choroidal tubercular, tuberculoma of the choroid, some kind of a large choroidal mass lesion in the eye. So, and is it difficult to diagnose? No, it's not difficult to diagnose. Yeah. If you dilate the eyes and you see with indirect ophthalmoscope, we can uh, see the changes inside that. Yeah. But uh, routinely does physicians think about, HIV physicians think of ocular TB? No, they, they, they do not think about ocular TB. Mm -hmm. Ocular toxoplasmosis also is another common feature. Mm -hmm. This toxoplasmosis is difficult for diagnosis for even ophthalmologists because they are very extensive mm -hmm. and they are multifocal. Usually the toxoplasma in the eye in normal people immunocompetent people is single focus. It is a multiple focus lesions and is very large. We have recently seen one lady who had a blood transfusion several years back, had developed a kind of retinitis, so extensive retinitis, we thought that is a viral infection. Later on we found that this is due to the toxoplasma and patient responded well to the toxoplasma treatment. So, uh, so late diagnosis of ocular TB in people living with HIV is a reality. Yeah, it can cause yeah. vision loss. Yeah, can, can, it can also cause vision loss, right? Yeah, yeah it yeah. can cause vision so loss. So, what can be done so that pe pe people living with HIV with ocular problems so can So, they be, should be send any ocular uh, problem, any eye problem in the patients, uh, even if the CD4 count is high, should be sent to an ophthalmologist. Right. And who should see not only the front part of the eye, back part of the eye also should be seen. So there may be some lesions is that one. I published an article of ocular lesions in AIDS in India, a book, small book, mm -hmm. which has been published by Madra, from Madras. Mm -hmm. And it is widely circulated. It has been given free to all medical colleges. Okay. And the diagnosis is made like do you take samples of the eye like I'm yeah. just imagining how it happens. Yeah. It goes to gene so expert. Sometimes or... um, we make a clinical diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do imaging. 
but many of the times we take a small fluid from the anterior chamber eye of the eye, that's the front part of the eye, by taking a fluid from the eye, you call aqueous humor. We do it and we do that molecular biologic study and as well as the microbiologic study. You heard of PCR? Yes, yes. Polymerase chain yes. reaction? Yeah. So we have done polymerase chain reaction for many of the HIV cases. That's LP. Cases. Is it called LPA? Is it part of the line no, group? It's, it's no, the that's country. a different PCR. It's a different PCR. Okay, all right. It's called NEST real-time PCR or nested PCR. Okay, right. Okay. And about the treatment of ocular TB? Is it, it is uh, the standard treatment standard. you should give. That whatever the normal treatment we give for the TB, that works for the ocular TB also. Right. So when a patient is diagnosed of ocular tuberculosis, uh, so he is or she is referred to the HIV, oh sorry, TB, TB clinic. TB, TB doctor. Yeah. TB specialist takes care of that one and we right. see that repeatedly regularly we review the patients and check yeah. the eyes. Yeah. So, they right. respond to very well to the anti-TB treatment. Yeah. So AIDS doctors should look into the uh, look into the new infections and also the drug related problem in the eye and uh, particularly newer drugs has come and many of them they do not know that what are these uh, complications or what are the side effects many of them can produce color defect color vision defect or dry eyes or um, some other problems so we need to uh, investigate them and uh, this uh, particularly all the patients should be uh, seen by an ophthalmologist if they develop some ocular complaints. Mm. Right. This is the message which you should go. Yeah. So right. that AIDS um, disease uh, though has declined, but still we have got a lot of way, long way to go. Yeah. We need to see that many other uh, infections and inflammations and diseases uh, in the eye. Eye is an organ which if it is lost, the vision is lost, the patient is an uh, economic burden to the family and the society.